Let's return, uh, talk more indeed about the diplomatic standoff ahead of this week's Syria peace conference. Syed Shiata from BBC Arabic is here. Now, Syed, Qatar and Saudi Arabia, two of the biggest supporters of the Syrian rebels. Russia, a big supporter of President Bashar al-Assad. So why shouldn't Iran be there? If the West wants those who support the rebels to be in attendance, why not those who support the president? I think uh, there is uh, the reservation of the United States and the uh, national, uh, Syrian National Co uh, Coalition is that Iran like, has a hand in a way or another for the militant inside uh, Syria and the supporting Hezbollah who deployed uh, some personnel inside there. Besides that, Iran did not endorse so far the Geneva One, uh, which uh, especially uh, the article about the new uh, transitional governing body, which has like full executive power so is that with Iran approving that and uh, stop like sending like or supporting Hezbollah or whatever so this is the main reservation of the uh, two sides uh, however Ban Ki-moon and other uh, forces uh, stress the, uh, the importance of Iran because Iran is the important regional player in the area and they cannot be ignored so even they are considered by uh, the United States and the opposition as uh, an evil or whatever as an obstacle however its engagement is very important to uh, stop them from doing what they're doing now uh, for supporting the uh, Syrian regime. Those are very important details, the differences between Iran and uh, the others who uh, support uh, the transitional government, a potential transitional government, but possibly even more important is whether there can even be a proper solution without Iran's involvement. It's not going to be a proper solution without Iran. Iran and Russia are a big, a big player in that. And without Russia and Iran together, especially Russia, is not going to be a, a solution in the near future. Even with all uh, the uh, pressure from different countries and even the humanitarian aid, which last week in, a, in Kuwait, which uh, uh, hosted like a very uh, big conference with 62 countries there, and Kuwait generously uh, donated $500 million and the other countries $2.4 uh, billion. However, uh, Mrs. Uh, Baroness uh, uh, Valerie uh, Amos said that uh, is not enough and it needs to be ways to reach the needy people and you cannot reach the needy people without stopping the violence and the stopping the violence cannot be happen without the political solution so humanitarian aid in itself cannot help so the political solution is urgent and persisting and this cannot happen without Iran and Russia be on the table uh, with the other forces. And you were at that conference in Kuwait, so you have seen firsthand and spoken to these diplomatic players who are trying to find uh, some sort of end game to what's happening in Syria. What happens if the Syrian National Coalition doesn't attend Switzerland? Who then represents the main opposition inside the country? I think the Syrian uh, uh, National uh, Coalition will attend. It's the try to show that they are not going to let uh, uh, down in the Syrian people. However, the American will put pressure on, on the uh, Syrian National Coalition to do that because the, the opposition is divided and the opposition that is part of the opposition didn't agree on going to uh, the talk from the start. Like 44 members, they didn't attend the meeting which lasted two days in Turkey for uh, the, uh, the, the coalition to go to the, the talk. So there's a lot of pressure in Al Jarba, the head of the, uh, national, uh, the Syrian National uh, Coalition. So I think putting around the equation, putting a layout for or excuse for Al Jarba to withdraw from the uh, negotiation or from the talks. But I, I think uh, as we'll come to the end, there is no other option but to accept Iran to be on the table. Syed Shata, thanks for the analysis. We appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you.